Have you ever wondered what the f*** is going on with Thailand's messy electrical cables? Maybe you've been walking down the street arm in arm with your favourite ladyboy, Ningpu, looked up and thought, f*** me, that looks like a fire hazard wrapped in spaghetti. Or maybe you're an apprentice electrician imagining the poor sod who's going to be handed that mess with nothing but a tester and a packet of zip ties. We'll wonder no longer, because today we're going to take a butcher's at Thailand's tangled up techno pubes, aka the overhead cable situation. We're going to figure out what these wires are, why they look like a failed knitting project, if they're dangerous, and whether Thailand will ever untangle this electric bowl of noodles, or if it's destined to remain a hairy tribute to Ningpu's majestic undercarriage forever. Hello sexy man, my name Ningpu. <laughs> Hello lovely people, welcome back to Fixing Rusty Stuff, Thailand edition, where the electrics are clueless, the cables are lawless, and we love you long time. So, to reach a climax in this orgy of Thailand cable knowledge, firstly, let's have a little foreplay with Phuket's electrical network, so that we can figure out what the f*** all these cables are, and what they're doing. The lovely island of Phuket, known for beaches, bars, and brothels. What it's not known for, having its own f***ing power station. The island runs entirely on imported lecky from the mainland. Two main lines feed it, a 230 kV line from Pangar 2 power station, and a recently upgraded 500 kV monster fed all the way from Suratani. As we get a bit closer, you can see these HV pylons are very similar to the type we get in the UK. These bad boys run in from the north of the island either side of the bridge, and they terminate at the heart of Phuket's 115 kilovolt grid, substation 3. Now this substation's had more upgrades than Ningpu's private parts. The doctor turned my sausage into donut. What was supposed to be finished in 2020, well let's just say construction schedules are more like construction suggestions in Thailand, and yes, I visited substations on holiday, because nothing says wholesome vacation vibes like transformers and whore bars. Ok, so we got more power at Phuket substation 3 than if Zeus shot a lightning bolt straight from his very own penis. But we can't use 500 bloody kilovolts to boil a kettle now, can we? That will fry the kettle faster than a toaster will fry my balls if thrown in a half full bathtub. That's where substation 3 comes into its own. It steps the lecky down from 230 or 500 kV to a much more palatable and less angry 115, which it then sends out across the island to six smaller substations, which is exactly what these bad boys are for. Completely obsolete and outdated 115 kV utility poles. These go between substation 3 and the other substations in Phuket, where the voltages step down again to 22 kV and distributed to industry and around the local district. Let's take substation Talang 2 for example. This is Phuket's OG power dispatch spot, fitted with 250 MVA transformers hidden behind a fence and making the magic work. They take in that 115 kV and gently whisper it down to 22 kV, ready for the lower pylons to spread it around a local area like a massage girl with a venereal disease. Ok, so far we figured out where the electricery comes from, how it gets from the mainland to substation 3, and then to the various substations around the island on a 115 kV grid. We also know that it then gets stepped down to 22 kV for industry and local area distribution at the smaller substations and sent out on these lower pylons. But how do we get that sweet household friendly 220 volts? Well, that's where these little unstoppable iron core wielding magnetic field inducing voltage whispering thunder boxes come in. This one's a 250 kVA Ty Maxwell Electric pole mounted transformer, a hermetically sealed oil filled miracle. It takes 22 kV buzz juice and shits 220 volt phase to neutral or 380 volt phase to phase out of its metal arse, which is perfect for charging all your sex robots or powering your automatic love machines. It's wired delta on the HV side and star on the LV side. So the neutral on the transformer LV side has the star point connected to earth with a rod shoved into the ground. It doesn't look like an earth cable is provided to the consumers by the DNO, because who needs proper earthing when you got hope on an earth rod? 
So this explains the lower four cables. Three phases and a neutral running along the street, with a phase and neutral branch going to each household on these lower pylons. Great, so we've got 115 kV, 22 kV, and 380 220 volt power cables. So now we know what all the cables are, right? Wrong. That still doesn't explain what the hell the rest of this black noodle soup is. What the f are they? They're for the interwebs, of course. How does Thailand manage to get super fast 600 megabyte internet? Thousands and thousands of fiber optic internet cables. Yeah, these days Thailand boasts shockingly fast internet everywhere. Thailand has witnessed substantial growth in internet speeds over the years. In the early 2000s, broadband services were limited and costly with speeds around 256 kilobytes per second. But now, well, with increased competition, infrastructure investments, and thousands of messy overground cables, speeds improve significantly. Recent data indicates that Thailand ranks 13th globally for fixed broadband speeds, boasting an average download speed of 237 megabytes per second. For those that aren't particularly tech savvy, that's basically fast enough to stream Pornhub in HD on three devices effortlessly, while your new Thai bride Zoom calls her sick buffalo back in Buriram. As Thailand's internet providers scramble to ensure reliable high-speed internet for cheaper than a rub and tug at your local massage parlour, removing old broken or redundant cables from street pylons hasn't exactly been a high priority. Yeah, those fast speeds came at a cost. Cable anarchy. Because instead of just replacing old lines or tidying up, Thailand's go-to solution is... Just add another cable, mate. Need a new connection? Just add another cable, mate. Your internet gone down? Just add another cable, mate. Change your internet provider to one that allows adult content? Just add another cable, mate. Now very quickly, you can see how we reached Electric Pube City. The utility companies have just been adding cables to the network every time they need a new connection. So over the years, the streets have become a monument to redundant wiring. It's like every time a new tenant moved in, someone climbed the ladder and went, ah, too much effort tracing that one, and slung another spaghetti strand over the pile. In fact, the mess of spaghetti pubes has got so bad that the technicians installing them have taken to supporting the cables from random balconies and cable tying them to stop them whacking pedestrians in the head as they walk by. It's not all doom and gloom though. The government has launched a plan to clean up the mess. They've successfully buried a measly 91 kilometers of cable underground. I mean, it sounds good until you realize there's thousands more kilometers to go. An optimistic prediction is that Thailand will be overhead cable free sometime in the next millennium. So data cables, whether fiber optic or extra low voltage copper, ain't gonna give you any buzz juice based injuries. But what about the electrical network? How safe is that set up? Well, if these British tourists were still alive, they'd probably tell you that it's not very fucking safe. Scott Mitchinson, Sean Wally, Charlie Thomas and Grant Harrison are just a few British tourists that met an untimely end due to the dangerous state of Thailand's electrical network. Rest in peace, lads. And when you see this stuff up close, it's no surprise. Cables chopped and left dangling. HV electricians working on overhead power lines without any protective barriers for the public. 33 kilovolt exposed terminals you can poke with a selfie stick. Uh, I'm pretty sure this meter ain't suitably IP rated, and believe me, in monsoon season, Thailand gets some pretty f***ing heavy rain. Uh, I, mean, I mean, there's so much wrong with this one, I don't even know where to start. I guess undersized cables incorrectly joined without suitable mechanical or environmental protection would probably sum it up pretty good. Electrical engineering in Thailand seems to mainly consist of connector blocks, tapes and dreams. An electrical box is secured with discarded wire that can be easily opened by any old Tom, Dick or Ningpu wandering down the street. I mean, at least they've bothered to get the supply cables to the condos underground. But with the rest of the network so unsafe, it's like putting a porn star in a black dress and calling her a nun. As you can see, Thailand's electrical and internet infrastructure needs a lot of work to make it safe. And despite government efforts, utility companies are reluctant to bury the power and data cables due to the massive cost. Getting the infrastructure to Western standards is a distant wet dream, so just make sure that if you visit the land of smiles, stay away from anything that hums. Unless, of course, it's coming from Ningpu's bedside cabinet. Well, lovely people, I hope you found it informative and entertaining. If you did, don't forget to electrocute that like button, gently fondle the subscription cable, share it with your favourite Ningpu. Yes, many lady boy here, that boy they call it Bangkok. And stay tuned for the next instalment of Fixing Rusty Stuff. Thailand Edition! And for God's sake, unlike these monkeys, don't touch the bloody wires.